Texas. Kendall what they're doing. One of Colorado's largest mental health hospitals. People need to know what goes on inside those walls. A facility trusted with treating our state's mentally ill. People are not animals. People are not paychecks. Insiders exposing the secrets. They're paying to to get better and we're not we're not helping them get better. Providing a voice to the voiceless. I can tell you that patient care was not a priority. State and federal agencies forced to respond. It shouldn't take the news media to make something happen. Patient deaths and claims of a cover-up. One might conclude that Clearview tried to cover up this death. I think they did. I think they gave us misinformation. If these allegations are true, people ought to be going to jail. Tonight, a Denver 7 special report. Clearview needs to be shut down. Dying for help. A mental health crisis in clear view. Now from our Denver 7 studios, Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. Good evening. What you're about to watch started with a single phone call. A dad concerned for his son. A dad recognizing something was really wrong. What followed was a tidal wave of insiders wanting you to know the secrets behind the walls of Clearview Behavioral Health. These faces, their voices, contributed to seven months of reports by our investigative team. The state confirming their stories pressured regulators to respond. Earlier this week, they moved to revoke the license of this mental health hospital. Here's why. I saw red flags right away. She's a former nurse. They're trying to keep people and get more money out of insurance, and it's just wrong. Because of the news reports and people coming through, following through, that they're being held accountable. She's a former administrator. You worked there for two years. Did you see questionable practices when it comes to insurance billing? Yes. I saw the charge nurse cut and paste the doctor's signature onto some forms to keep a patient longer. And she's a former therapist. Were you asked to deviate from the truth? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm still angry and frustrated and sad because I'm still struggling to find help. One by one. I can tell you that patient care was definitely not a number one priority. They stepped forward. It's a scandal what they're doing. To share their stories. You can't treat people the way that they treat people. People are not animals. People are not paychecks. Accusations of the unthinkable. They're paying to to get better and we're not we're not helping them get better. It was always about the money or insurance. It wasn't about care. It was about how much they can get from that person. A mental health hospital accused of preying on mentally ill patients. You were there for 10 days. <laughs> was the priority of this facility to make you better? No, absolutely not. We kind of figured out that they were keeping people for insurance. Claims of putting profit over patient care. What's the priority at Clearview? Is it patient care or the bottom line? It's all about money and it's fraud and it's not patient care. Some willing to show their faces. Are you concerned doing this interview might cost you your job? Absolutely. You're willing to risk it? Yes. Others asking us to disguise their identities fearing an aggressive corporate response. Are you afraid of retaliation for doing this interview? I'm terrified, actually. In all, more than five dozen patients, family members, former employees, and current employees, all showing courage with a cause. I'm accusing them of abusing their power, insurance fraud, or, or at the very least, insurance farming. Mike was the first to reach out to Contact 7 Investigates. <laughs> The call came after Clearview administrators refused to release his teenage son. Did you realize at one point you were being held against your dad's wishes? Yeah, I kind of figured that out pretty early on. Sweeping accusations against this mental health hospital 47 miles north of Denver. Claims included charging Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance companies for phantom therapy sessions or sessions with untrained, unlicensed therapists. The therapy groups weren't being done. The geriatric unit throwing a board game down at a tech and telling them to play it is not a therapy group. Every minor is supposed to have a family therapy session um, before they discharge. Are you saying that they billed for services they didn't provide? 
Correct. Um, especially group therapy sessions. They say minimum wage mental health techs, many times hired away from fast food restaurants, techs with no formal training, ran many therapy groups at Clearview. The techs, again, maybe from Taco Bell, maybe from Walmart, were running therapy groups and writing notes for it, and therapists were signing them. Other accusations include short staffing creating dangerous conditions for both patients and staff and serious sanitation failures. The janitorial staff, um, we didn't have one for months, and so nothing really got cleaned. He worked as a mental health technician, paid just above minimum wage. Out of frustration, he quit after a year. I have had a few times where it was me and 18 psychotic patients. Was that safe? When I don't have four eyes looking around every everything around me, it's not safe at all. But perhaps the most concerning accusation came to us from several patients and insiders. The claim, keeping patients longer than necessary, essentially exhausting all insurance coverages. Did you want to leave before you were sent home? Absolutely, yes, many, many, many times. What were you told? That I wasn't ready, that the doctor decided that I wasn't ready, the doctor that I hadn't seen. Who's making the decision on discharges? Is it the medical professionals or the money managers, the administrators? The administrators that are making the decision and nobody says anything. What does that say to you? That it's all wrong. And that appears to be confirmed by this internal email sent to Denver 7 by an insider. We have to stop having two heavy discharge days in a row. She's reading the email by Clearview CEO Rick Harding. Take a close look. It appears to show his attempt to delay the discharge of 18 patients on two consecutive days. You work there as a nurse. What does that email say to you? That they're not worried about their patients at all. That they're worried about their census and the money. Is it accurate to say this facility has issues? There were absolutely issues, Tony. You bet. He's the division director for the State Department of Public Health. Just days after the initial Denver 7 investigation aired, his team conducted a surprise inspection. It uncovered significant failures. Late today, the state downgraded the operation license of Clearview Behavioral Health. In fact, since Denver 7 started reporting on Clearview, the state has conducted two surprise inspections, uncovering serious deficiencies inside the mental health hospital and twice placing the facility on an immediate jeopardy designation. When immediate jeopardy is called, it means our surveyors and inspectors feel there's an immediate threat to life and safety. During multiple interviews, the state has sent a clear message to Clearview management. We are quite concerned. Our message to the senior management of Clearview is that uh, there are problems. And I want to emphasize those problems must be fixed. And the facility is on termination track and is under a conditioned license. This is the last stop before a license revocation process begins. What's the most important thing this story needs to accomplish? Needs to hold Clearview accountable. And remember, when she did this interview back in January, Kelly was a current employee still working inside the hospital. Look into that camera and talk to the CEO and tell him what he needs to hear. I think the CEO of Clearview needs to hear that you know, these are real people with thoughts and feelings. Um, they're important and they matter. You know, they're not just a dollar sign. Tony Kovaleski from Denver 7. Is Mr. Harding available? After several phone calls were not returned, we went directly to the Johnstown Mental Health Hospital, wanting to talk with the CEO. Here to see Mr. Harding. Could you send him out, please? Um, he's not available right now. Okay, so. we can wait. Um, it, he, he's not here. He's not here. He is here. His car's outside. He's not. You're not, he's not available. You didn't tell me the truth, did okay. you? He's not available. Instead of making CEO Rick Harding available to respond to the accusations from dozens of patients, family members, current and former employees, the facility elected to send out its director of nursing. We've talked to several current and former employees. Mm -hmm. They paint a picture of what happens behind that door. Mm -hmm. That's not a very pretty picture. Well, I think we probably would prefer if you'd leave the building. In fact, Denver 7 has made several attempts to speak with top-level managers from Clearview. Tony Kovaleski with Contact 7 Investigates. I'd like to talk to you about what happened with somebody you saw. He's not happy with what you did. Do you have anything to say? Including multiple visits to give Clearview's CEO a chance to answer the accusations. Hey, can you guys cut me the 
property, please. How are you? I'm Tony Kowaleski with yes. Contact 7 Investigates. Nice do you have a moment? I do not. Can you please leave the building? We've been working to get a comment from your facility. We have two families that have said what you do yes. here is, is a big problem. Well, I'm asking you to please leave the property. Okay. If you don't, we're going to have to call the police, okay? Since January, Clearview's management has declined multiple requests to answer questions in front of our cameras, electing instead to issue written statements that point to the facility's national accreditation and stress their priority is quality patient care. Most recently, Clearview responded to the state's move to revoke its license, saying they are disappointed by the notice and now hoping to address the state's concerns. Two immediate jeopardies, a termination track, a criminal investigation into a death. Can this facility fix this situation? It isn't my place to speak to whether they can or whether they will. I wish they could. I would hope they can, but the department's not confident because if we were, if we had more confidence, we wouldn't have taken the steps we've taken. I think the step we have taken speaks for itself. You watch this man die. Do you wonder if it could have been prevented? Every day. That story, when we return. I think it's bringing to light a bad situation, a bad facility. Welcome back. There are also serious questions and concerns to share with you about deaths connected with patient care inside Clearview. Following our reporting, the state's attorney general and the Larimer County DA are now conducting criminal investigations. We continue our reporting with the story of Tibor Hute. Every time I think about the incident, I wonder what if, what if we didn't give him those medications? Would, would he still be here today? It's a commodity we all value an intangible asset we sometimes take for granted. So my pledge is to take better and better care of myself. 47-year-old Tibor Hate thought he had plenty of time in his future, plenty of time to share with his two kids and his family. He recorded this video on July 11th, two years ago. He died four days later. I found him not breathing. She was working inside the mental health hospital. I was the one that called the medical emergency on the radio. Like several former Clearview employees, she has asked us to disguise her identity because she fears retaliation, even blacklisting. You watched this man die. Do you wonder if it could have been prevented? Every day. It was wrong. There's nothing you can say. Nothing's gonna make that better. She's a former administrator, also concerned about retaliation. She was called in minutes after the death. I cried. A lot. I was super upset and I wasn't there during it, but I still knew it was wrong. The anger and frustration of the two former insiders centers on a decision by Clearview to give the 47 year old a powerful tranquilizer, a cocktail of medications. Who do you blame for this man's death? The person giving the shot, the person making the orders. Clearview? Yes. Public records reviewed by Denver 7 did not disclose the names of the Clearview employees responsible for administering that tranquilizer. Two insiders have said to us that this man, this father, didn't deserve to die. Uh, no, he did not. If he were better cared for, would he be alive today? Certainly more than likely. That's the opinion of Larimer County's coroner. His employees responded to Clearview after Tibor's death. Is there reason to wonder if Clearview contributed to his death? Yes, there is reason <clears throat> because they gave him the drugs. And Denver 7 has obtained this report confirming what you just heard from the coroner in the supplemental investigation conducted by his chief deputy back in October of 2017. She details troubling findings after watching Clearview's in-house security video. As a medical professional, do you question their decision to give him that cocktail of medication? Yes, that, that cocktail is intended as a tranquilizer for somebody who is very agitated um, and confrontational. And those 
situations did not exist. In the report written by the deputy coroner, she confirms, I reviewed the video footage from the file. The video clearly shows the decedent was not combative. Insiders called the tranquilizer a B-52, a combination of three powerful drugs. From what you observed on that videotape, did he need this cocktail of medication? No. But the coroner's concerns about decisions made inside Clearview don't end there. Would it be accurate for me to report that Clearview attempted to cover up the details of this death? Yes, they, they gave us inaccurate and, and misleading information in the initial investigation. According to the report written by the coroner's chief deputy, the cover-up centers on Clearview creating documentation claiming nurses conducted required checks on Tibor in the hour after he was given that B-52 tranquilizing cocktail. Investigators did not name the person who created the fabricated document. Executives at Clearview told police he was monitored, correct? Yes. That wasn't the truth, was it? No, it wasn't. What did the video show? The video showed that he wasn't monitored for a significant period of time, nearly an hour, an hour, almost an hour. Does that change the level of responsibility here? It, it certainly changes the level of trust and, and, and lets you know that there's, there's a significant problem. He was given injection. We also brought the questions and concerns raised from Tibor's death to the state's Department of Public Health. She said he didn't deserve to die. No, I'm sure he did not. Would it be accurate for us to report the state is now going to investigate what happened? Yes, uh, uh, absolutely we're going to. Clearview's senior management said federal law prevented them from speaking about Tibor's death. But in a statement, the company wrote, any suggestion that we might attempt to cover up details of a reportable event is false and outrageous. Our state investigators also looking at other deaths that may have a nexus with Clearview. Yes, there are other deaths that are related to this facility. And during our investigation, former insiders talked about witnessing other questionable deaths. You watched a male die. I didn't just watch him die. I felt him die underneath my hands. In your opinion, was it a preventable death? With what I know that his issue was, it was highly preventable. Are you aware of the deaths that we're looking into? Yes, they could have been prevented, without a doubt. The county coroner did confirm the state's investigative radar now includes patients who committed suicide shortly after they were discharged from Clearview. There's three different suicides that have occurred within a week or you know, a day or a week of being released from the facility. And a recently released state report details another questionable death. This one happened in January of this year. A patient died shortly after leaving Clearview. The report says a nurse administered medication that a previous hospital discontinued. And that contributed to an acute kidney injury, a medication with known side effects, and quote, which potentially contributed to the patient's death. What's your message to state investigators that are now looking into this death? They should hold this hospital responsible for getting its, itself in order. Following our report on Tibor's death, attorneys hired by Clearview sent this letter to Denver 7. It demanded the station remove all stories from its website. It demanded we publish raw interviews, and it concluded with this sentence. Lastly, we encourage you to review the above reference story and others that aired previously and take whatever action you deem appropriate to address Mr. Kovaleski's unethical, inaccurate, and unbalanced reporting. Denver 7's lead attorney responded saying in part, the station's reporting on Clearview is true, substantially true, and is supported by extensive investigative records. Denver 7's attorney also declined all demands made by the attorney for Clearview. I think the whole system's broken. Seems like it could have been a high priority two years ago. The only difference here is now the media is involved. Our investigation continues after this.
Welcome back. Questions of accountability go beyond the walls of Clearview. Many families telling us they complained to the state of Colorado. Complaints to multiple agencies going back more than two years. Why weren't they heard? And how will the state fix these failures? Our story continues. This is a huge deal. Cammie Chase tried to make a difference. They're playing with people's lives, and that's not okay. Her adopted daughter, Sarah. The truth needs to be told. Spent a week inside Clearview. Clearview is not suitable for anybody who needs treatment. Sarah and her mom are courageously speaking out. Sarah went to Clearview needing mental health help, dealing with teenage bullying and other issues. They identified serious problems at Clearview more than two and a half years ago. I feel like I had a silenced voice for years. I feel like I was ignored by the state. Cammie sent this letter to the state's Department of Regulatory Agencies back in November of 2016, concerned about Clearview's failure to communicate with family members, short staffing, fabricated signatures, and general lack of quality care. Her message was clear. Clearview needs to be shut down. Why did you complain to the state? Because of the, the care my daughter got, it was... I just felt like somebody needed to know. Melissa also flew a red flag to the state, frustrated with the treatment her daughter received at Clearview. I wish the state would have gotten involved sooner. And following our reports, we heard similar frustrations from other parents and family members. They also made complaints to the state more than two years ago. I called the hospital complaint line. I called the Colorado Public Health Department and I called Medicaid. So you call these different state agencies. Did you receive a response? No, no calls back, no emails back. Reaction to that? So when I saw the story, I felt really angry that it's taken that long. I did make it very clear that the only reason I was contacting them was because I really felt people were in danger. This father sent complaints to Clearview's management and three different state agencies. There's a lot of satisfaction knowing that something's happening, but there's also sadness because it shouldn't take the news media to make something happen. What do you say to those people that basically said the state system didn't work? Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser. I'm so sorry. It breaks my heart when I hear this. I know that government doesn't always work the way it should. Colorado's Attorney General acknowledged the state's current system of accepting and processing complaints is too siloed and lacks the synergy necessary to allow the state to properly identify the significant number of complaints the state received prior to our reporting. We appreciate that people are coming forward. They deserve to be heard. We're going to do our best to not let this sort of thing happen again. Do you welcome the Attorney General saying this needs to be fixed? Absolutely, we welcome the Attorney General. Anything that the Department of Public Health and Environment can do to make this better and more efficient, to make a safer system, we're going to do that. A strong comment and a commitment to change. Our reporting does not stop here. Clearview now has about 30 days to respond to what's believed to be an unprecedented move to revoke its license. State sources telling us this issue could make its way into the courts for a final decision by a judge. We leave you now, though, with a pledge to the courageous insiders and the vulnerable patients needing help. We will keep asking questions and holding those in power accountable for their actions. You are invited now to join the conversation on this issue. Please share your thoughts by visiting Denver 7's Facebook page. I'm Tony Kovaleski. Thanks for joining us. Good night. It's a blessing that you guys are doing what you guys are doing to uncover the truth of what's really going on behind a facility like this.